carrier ships are disappointing. Why? They lack an element that could give them unmatched speed for dominating the seas. These elements are hydrofoils and wings. Honestly, a navy lacking these technologies feels incomplete. Imagine a wall of steel hurtling towards you equipped with hydrofoils for increased maneuverability and wings for faster travel. Now that's intimidating. With hydrofoils, you could easily escape from another carrier or submarine. So, I took the liberty of building a Leviathan in Kerbal Space Program 2 that any nation would crave. We'd use our imagination and engineering without any real world budgets to build this dream ship. The requirements? Various types of fighter jets brimming with missiles as our ship's firepower. Room for large crew and, most importantly, two large runways. 300 meters is the average size but will build as long as Kerbal physics allow. Massive delta wings for superior lift and stability. And, it goes without saying, sleek lines and a shiny silver finish is essential for the cool factor. As for the engines, nuclear powered turbines would have been preferred, however we're limited in game so we are using jet engines instead. This isn't cost effective at all but at least they're undeniably powerful. Now, the most important part of this build is of course, the hydrofoils. When water flows over the hydrofoil, it speeds up on the top side and slows down on the bottom side. This creates higher pressure on the bottom of the hydrofoil and a lower pressure on the top, pushing the carrier upwards. It was important to make the foils large enough to provide lift at a certain velocity. As for the angle of attack, I left it flat for now as a greater angle of attack creates more lift but also more drag. So depending on the foil shape, changing the angle is essential to optimize the lift to drag ratio. Overall, the build consists of 693 parts, which doesn't sound like much, but we are using large parts which takes a toll on the game. Furthermore, water physics also creates more lag to the point where everything is slow motion. The carrier length is 140 meters long, and the total mass is over 4,000 tons. Now, this is like a feather compared to carriers, which can be over 100,000 tons. With over 50 roaring jets activated, the Leviathan slowly increased in speed. After a while, it achieves a speed of over 15 meters per second, which is disappointing. But the whole drag was too much for our ship. We did achieve being partially foilborne, meaning the hull was out of water. Unfortunately, the sheer size of the build also makes it impossible to control. So you'll find it going random directions sometimes. But at the very least, this would work great at confusing enemies, as they would have no idea what this unpredictable metal monster is up to. Now the fighter jets on top are the gem of this build. We have the Boeing F-15, EX Eagle 2 and the Northrop YF-23 Black Widow 2. And of course we have the A-10 Burt Warthog. You have to say the Burt part. Two of these jets are loaded with missiles. Now to fly these things we have to first press the brakes, decouple them, then we throttle up. Release the brakes, then whoosh. We accelerate along the runway and then we're in the air. Or that's what I expected. The actual event was a lot simpler. The jet was so advanced, it managed to phase through the aircraft carrier, becoming a seaplane. And well, it was somewhat controllable, so we left it in the ocean. But that's fine, we launched a brand new jet and tried to land on the aircraft carrier. And as expected, it went swimmingly. At this point, I figured we would test our missiles on something and the best test subject was the carrier. So here we go, firing onto the carrier and seeing this awesome explosion and you would expect a lot of damage but I didn't really see much damage so much like the real life carrier it could take many hits and remain floating. Now I've been promoting hydrofoil carrier ships a lot here but there are many challenges facing them. As you might expect the foil struts and supports are critical as you certainly don't want one snapping off causing the entire ship to topple over. Furthermore, the height of the waves are a concern, as it could result in the foil breaking the surface and being outside the water, leading to a loss of lift which, in turn, could make the ship crash into the sea. So will we see hydrofoil carriers patrolling the oceans anytime soon? 
Most likely not. But hey, Kerbal Space Program gives us the freedom to dream and build the impossible. Finally, to give credits, when I was searching for a Hydrofell aircraft carrier design, I found this Reddit article which inspired the build. Links in the description for the Reddit post and of course the carrier build file will be in the description to try it out yourself. Also let me know your thoughts on this type of video style as it's still new for me and I'm working to improve for everyone's enjoyment. So thank you for watching.